Parrots clearly don't understand syntax. But what about great apes? They are much closer to us in evolutionary terms. If they could speak, would they speak in sentences? Morning in Riverdale. Time for Nim to prepare for another day at Columbia University. In the 1970s, linguistic researchers tried to answer this question by rearing a chimp like a human child. The chimp, called Nim, was raised on a diet of American Sign Language. Every day he was taken to Columbia University for an intensive regime of classes. The first results were promising. Nim learnt more than a hundred signs. And he seemed to understand that the order in which they were used mattered. He could tell the difference between you tickle me and me tickle you. He seemed to understand a simple kind of syntax. But on closer examination, it became apparent that the experiment was compromised. Nim's trainers, it turned out, were unconsciously prompting him to choose certain signs, a classic error in behavioral studies. The project was deemed a failure and abandoned. A very different approach was taken with a chimp called Lana. In order to eliminate experimental bias, her minders made her live in a sealed box and communicate her desires by computer. She was rewarded with food only if she pressed a series of buttons in the right order. The idea was that the computer would record her every word and so elucidate the basis of chimp language. The problem, obvious in retrospect, was that Lana, all alone in a box, had very little to talk about. Then came Kanzi. I got the onions in a bowl. Let's go put them in our hot food and we'll come back and turn the TV on. Put your onions right here and put them in your bowl. Kanzi is a bonobo born at a primate center in Atlanta. You spill some of like Lana, he was brought up using a computerized keyboard. But unlike Lana, he has always lived in close contact with humans. The results have been impressive. He clearly understands the commands and instructions of his trainer. But the communication is all one way. Yeah. Give Sue bananas. Despite decades of training, Kanzi actually says very little. Kanzi, give Sue ice. He can answer basic questions, but he's unable to initiate a conversation in the way that a human child does very naturally. Can you hear me, Goggy? Give the doggy a shot. Chimps can certainly learn signs or symbols for bananas, for pails, for carrying, for throwing, for pudding, and so on. Good job. They can pay attention somewhat to the order in which they're used, the difference between put uh, banana apple or put apple banana. But uh, in comparison with what a child can do, it's still fairly rudimentary. Put the tea in the refrigerator. Part of the thrust of this effort was to shrink the evolutionary gap between humans and other animals. Part of it was uh, attempting to elevate the status, even the moral status of animals, and it's very much tied to the animal rights movement. Uh, and so with this mixture of motives, it's not so easy to assess the scientific relevance uh, of this work. Go get the ball that's outdoors. Especially since it involves the great enthusiasm of some researchers, Good job. Okay, one of whom I heard 
at a scientific conference predict that within a number of years the chimpanzee itself would be giving the talk. Now that, I, I'd be willing to make a bet that that will never happen. Could you take my shoe off, please? You might need to unpie it. No matter how much some people might wish it otherwise, it seems that humans, and only humans, have the ability to produce an infinite variety of meaningful sentences from a finite number of words. It's something we are all born with, a language instinct. But how has this instinct evolved? It's a question that we've been asking for more than a hundred years. And we're just beginning to find some answers with the help of this boy. My brain is trolling, trolling me not to talk away well. My brain. Paris, circa 1860. Paul Broca, physician and anthropologist, was pursuing his fascination with skulls and brains. But there is one brain in which he was particularly interested. This one. It belonged to a Monsieur Le Bon who as a young man had suffered an epileptic fit that had rendered him all but speechless. Indeed, he could only say one word, tan. And for the next 21 years of his life, he said it over and over again, tan tan, tan tan. When Le Bourne died, Broca removed his brain and found a severe lesion in the left-hand side of the frontal lobe. The lesion is still visible today, right here. Broca made the obvious inference. This is where human speech originates in the brain. Ever since, this part of the brain has been known as Broca's area. Broca's discoveries started a debate about the evolutionary origins of human language. One notable for its lack of evidence. While bones fossilize, speech leaves no trace in the earth. The Linguistic Society of Paris banned all further speculation on the subject as fruitless. And yet, given that language did evolve, there's one place where traces of its past might be found. And that is in our genes. West London, circa 1990. Clinical researchers discovered a large extended family with a rare speech disorder. Known to scientists as the K.E. family, their symptoms were similar to those of Broca's patient, Monsieur Le Bourne. Like him, they had a problem articulating words. They also made simple grammatical errors. Where do you live, Laura? I may ask show it. It's best font. May ask six. And name him Pavo. And my name is nine. Duck. Whereas Monsieur Le Bourne's speech problems were caused by brain damage, the K family were born this way. They had a mutation in one of their genes. Have you had a blood test done before? If scientists could find it, they would find a gene that was clearly important to the development of language. We're going to take the DNA and we're going to see if we can follow the gene for the speech problem in your family. Yeah, how long does it take then? Well, it's going to take us a long time. There are about 25,000 genes in the human genome, but they are buried within three billion letters, nucleotides of DNA. In the KU family, one of those letters was wrong. And finding it is roughly equivalent to finding a single printer's error in 
all these books.